Our next speaker is the founder and managing director at DigiCapital, the firm behind uh, the AR VR report, which has been a major point of discussion in various top, top, top publications. Uh, Tim Merrill has experience in mobile internet, AR, VR, games, and digital from both investment banking and industry with education in software engineering, law, and business from Yale and Sydney University. He is recognized as a global mobile internet, AR, VR, and games expert, equally comfortable discussing deal structures, strategy, operations, or technology. Today, he will be talking about the economic future of the AR and VR industry, so please join me in welcoming Tim to the stage. Hello. Well, um, as he said, my background is software engineering, law, and investment banking, so I've got one honest profession. Um, today, we're going to talk about the economics, the money, where the money is going to come from, user bases, scale, different sectors. Um, if you want to find out any more, go to the link and you can find out more detail. Um, a little bit about us. Um, we uh, advise mobile, AR, VR, games, and digital companies in the States, China, Japan, South Korea, and Europe. And we do a few things. We buy and sell companies. Uh, we do management consulting, mainly strategy work um, around large companies entering new sectors or very high growth companies looking to grow a lot faster and industry analysis. And what we're going to go through today is going through some of that research. Now, to state the obvious, AR and VR are, are, are ex a really exciting stage. Um, today, I'm not going to talk about the market in 2015. I'm going to talk about the market from next year, when the market's really going to get going, through to 2020. So looking at, at AR, you've got um, uh, ODG having come in with both the sort of things they're testing with NASA, as well as their consumer products that will be coming in next year that Ralph was talking about. Magic Leap, Microsoft with HoloLens, Meta, Apple did an interesting acquisition recently, so it's going to be, be fun to see what they do. And we'd, we'd love to see an augmented one more thing from them uh, and, and others. In the VR space, you've got Facebook with Oculus. Uh, you've got HTC and Valve with the Vive. Or the Vive. Um, you've got Sony, Razer, Samsung, and others. So there's a lot going on, as well as things like Google Cardboard. So there's a broad range of activity for what's a very early stage market. AR and VR, on the face of them, do very similar things. You know, they both have stereoscopic vision, stereo audio, motion control, different inputs. But there's a huge difference. Uh, the way we think about it is very simple, that VR places the user inside a virtual world, immersing them, whereas AR places virtual things inside the user's real world, augmenting it. That difference means that VR, for ver the really immersive experiences of things like games, is better. You know, AR isn't as much fun for games as VR, but because you can see through it and around it. But that weakness is why AR potentially could outstrip not just VR, but actually disrupt the entire smartphone and tablet market. So where can you use AR and VR? Now, you could use VR in a range of environments, but broadly speaking, you don't want to be somewhere where you're going to walk into a pole because you haven't got peripheral vision. So you need a stable environment. That could be in your living room, could be in the office, could be in a train, could be in a plane. Basically, you want to be sitting down, standing, moving around, but in a controlled way. AR is very different. You can use it pretty much anywhere. Anywhere you can walk, run, jump, drive, jump out of a plane in space. Wherever you are, if you're untethered, looking up, using your hands, using a controller, you can use it anywhere you like. So that has very big implications for the markets that VR and AR will both cannibalize and grow. And broadly speaking, we see VR growing and cannibalizing the console and PC game market, 3D films, and niche enterprise users. AR, different. It's going to be cannibalizing and growing the smartphone and tablet market. So in terms of overall installed base, which underpins a lot of our thinking about where the market's going economically, VR is going to have tens of millions of users, so a very, very good solid market, very deep market. But we anticipate AR having hundreds of millions of users, a big difference. So let's look at the addressable markets, because when you're thinking about the economics, it's a question of well, what are folks doing, where they're going to be spending money, or where businesses are going to be spending money. VR, if you look at, at say, the example from uh, Tommy Palm, who's now set up Resolution Games, having uh, built Candy Crush, games 
obviously they're the biggest part of the demo market at the moment. You know, it's very hard not to see a games demo if you're looking at a VR headset. 3D films, you know, things like Gravity and so on. Again, great to watch in a VR environment. And then the niche enterprise users, so military, medical, education, all great markets for VR. When we look at AR, we see a broader set of use cases because if you think about it as something that's going to cannibalize and grow the mobile market, very different behaviors by users and different economics. So A-commerce, a cousin to M-commerce and E-commerce, basically, basically folks like Amazon and Alibaba selling things to people in an entirely new way. Making phone calls, again, mobile platform not tethered, moving around. You use it the same way that you use a smartphone, just plain old voice calls. Web browsing, other data, should be significant revenue streams for um, the telcos when, that mar when the market gets going. When we start to look at streaming, um, we think that plain old 2D video is going to be a big part of the market as well as 3D because in the same way that a lot of usage of smartphones is currently for streaming video, particularly if you look at some of the Asian markets uh, and particularly in China, you see the, the usage off the charts, we anticipate the same thing for AR. Business uses, we think there will be enterprise uses in VR, and there's absolutely no question of that, but we think AR will take more of the market because if you can walk around and collaborate with your colleagues while you're doing something, you're not fixed in a point, there's more flexibility, more uses, more slices within that. Then when you think about the overall scales of the market at a relative basis, a market with hundreds of millions and growing is a great case for advertising. So we think brands will come into the market once it starts to ramp and get to scale. Then if you look into consumer apps, the sort of apps you currently see on your smartphone and tablet, whether it be social networking, finance apps, I mean, name any category you wish. Again, at scale, some simpler apps will work extremely well on AR platforms. And then games. We don't anticipate games being as lar large a component for AR as for VR. And again, for very high quality games, we expect that to be more in VR than AR, but it'll still be a significant component of the market. And lastly, areas like theme parks, where some of the big theme park companies are already using some techniques, and we're seeing them developing more at the moment. So let's put that into numbers. Uh, and I think Ori stole my, my thunder with this um, chart uh, yesterday. Broadly speaking, we see VR making the early running next year and in 2017, because the market's more accelerated, there are more headsets coming to market, um, there are more developers, particularly in the game space. And so next year, we expect VR to be a large part. 2017 and going forward, we expect AR to accelerate as the installed base accelerates. So if you're a developer looking at the markets purely from a software point of view, there is a lag time while the installed base gets there. But it's going to get there, and it's going to be, in, be big. Our broad view is that AR will be bigger, more disruptive, and faster in terms of its effects than mobile was compared to the original internet. So let's bring that down to a view of where things might be in 2020. I'll start with VR. The biggest part of the market we anticipate will be games. It won't be quite, it'll be just under half of the market. Then the hardware piece, moving on then into film with 3D films, theme parks, and fast, lastly those niche markets. Moving back across to the AR market, which we expect to take the lion's share, we think hardware is going to be a very large part of the market going forward in the same way that it's a very large part of the smartphone and tablet market. Within commerce, that's the next biggest piece, and there's already a lot of focus on that today. Then for the telcos, basically they'll be making a lot of data revenues because somebody has to pay for all of that data, voice revenues, and so we expect the telcos to become more interested in this market when it starts to get to scale. Uh, then film and TV, um, we think there'll probably be more of a bias, again, towards the, the TV companies there than, say, the film companies, who we expect to be more interested in VR initially. And then moving on to all the different slices of enterprise. Coming after that, ad spending, again, it's a question of the overall user base. As that gets to scale, the brands will come in. And then consumer apps, games, and theme parks. So I think I've got probably a minute left. So that's broadly it. Um, and thank you very much. And also, I'd like to thank Ori very much for organizing such an amazing conference. Thank you. I think we might have time for one or two questions. So any questions?
Raise your hand for the questions. Uh, it's over here to the right, uh, if you can, sir. You talked about uh, films. Right now, there's no uh, available source for 3D format uh, films like iTunes or Amazon or Netflix. Uh, what do you see the industry doing about that? Uh, it's really interesting. Um, since we published the report, um, one of the things that we were genuinely surprised by was the level of interest from Hollywood. Um, it was completely off the charts. And we've had conversations with most of the major studios in the last, I'd say the last three, four weeks. And there's a broad spectrum. We've seen some guys where they've got dedicated VR and AR labs, and these guys only make blockbusters, and they bring in the big directors to come in and play with this stuff to figure out how they're going to take what is basically a linear medium, you know, a story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, where the director tells you where to look, and move that into a world where actually the user can decide where to look. Now, at the moment, in terms of the current state of the art, it's a little bit more like being on a theme park ride, like being on rails. You've got you know, camera, cameras at specific points, and the director decides which point you're at at a given time, or maybe you can switch. But we think that will change as the technology develops to the point where, and it, we've, already seen, we've already seen some demos of how this works, where actually you can actively move around the space. Now, there's a motion sickness question to solve, but we think that's, that will be solved. Um, in terms of the other end of the spectrum, you've got some of the big media conglomerates where they've got multiple divisions all over the world. And some of them have got 30 guys in a room, and they all desperately want to figure out how they're going to access this market, but they don't have the same level of education and understanding yet. So we're seeing a broad range, but we're seeing huge interest coming out of Hollywood. Oh, in terms of 2D? Uh, again, I mean, the, sorry, the, the question, uh, you can't hear from the mic, was what about existing films, 2D and 3D? Um, there are some technical issues in terms of some of the standards, and one of the presenters was talking about that a couple of days ago, um, and those need to be solved. But again, it's a question of timing. Uh, again, today, the market isn't where it's going to start to be from next year. So I think next year, 2017, is where you're going to see this start to ramp up. Okay. Big round of applause for Tim, everybody. Thank you.